Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on the multivariate normal distribution. Today, I will explain you what is the concept of marginal density function. Myself, Dr. Harishkar, you can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of applied mathematical analysis and you can see the lecture start from the bi bivariate normal distribution, multivariate, some results, transformation, independent conditional distribution and many more available in this playlist. Now, you can simply subscribe my YouTube channel so that you can learn many, many short, many, many tricks for applied statistics and get the notification in advance for the new uploaded video. So what is the objective of this lecture? When, whenever you have a multivariate normal distribution X such that sigma is my positive covariance matrix and X1 is of my P dimension because it's a P plus Q dimension then definitely x2 is of my q dimension. Now we know x is follows my multivariate normal distribution. Then the question arises is what will be the distribution of x1 and x2 that is a marginal density function. So my objective of this lecture is how you can find the marginal density function which distribution it follows, what could be the mean and the variances of this or what could be the mean and the covariance matrix of x1 and x2. You can watch till the end of this video and like and comment on my videos as well. So before I start directly, what is the marginal density function? Let me quickly recall you the concepts or some famous results. If X follows the multivariate normal distribution with the parameters mu and sigma and capital X is the partition of this X such that X1 is of my P dimension and X2 is my Q dimension and sigma is my covariance matrix positive covariance matrix is always my symmetric. Then we can take the transformation y1 and y2 such that these are uncorrelated and your target is to identify this matrix B. Remember this matrix B is called as matrix of regression coefficient. The matrix of regression coefficients of x because it is x2 on x1. So it's a regression coefficient of x2 on x1. This is a similar kind like if you have a regression equation that is a uh, regression line of y on x. Fine. So this m is basically b regression coefficient. The same condition we have apply on this case. Now what is given to you x and y, uh, y1 and y2 are uncorrelated that means by using this independent lecture we have a covariance 0. Now I can substitute the value of y1, y1 is x1, y2 is b times x1 plus x2 fine which is 0. Make sure you can define y2 like this manner or you can define y2 is x1 plus b times x2 then in that case this is the regression coefficient of x1 on x2 so that's on your choice now i can open this bracket it is a covariance of x1 or b can be outset firstly i can write here this covariance b is outset it's a covariance of x1 comma x1 plus covariance of x1 comma x2 which is 0. What is, a covari what is a covariance of x1 comma x1? That is my variance. So variance of x1 plus of this. Can you find the variance of x1? That is a sigma 1 1 plus the covariance of x1 x2. This is mine here. Now can you find the matrix B? So B sigma 1 1 is minus sigma 1 2 or I can found the value of the B as because this is a sigma 1 so I can post multiply by sigma 1 inverse. I can post multiply by sigma 1 inverse and this is the matrix B which is called as regression coefficient of x1 on uh, x2 on x1 fine or in other one because this is the regression because b is the matrix of regression coefficients x2 on x1 
so i have to return everything in terms of 2 1 now since we know sigma is my positive covariance matrix so we know sigma 1 2 and sigma 2 1 are always same so i can replace this matrix to be of this nature so therefore y b will be my minus sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse i can substitute this value here this is called as regression equation of x2 on x of x1 on x2 second result again if i assume x is my multivariate normal distribution such that x1 is of my p dimension x2 is of my q dimension i can define this new variable what is the purpose of this i will explain you a couple of slides then then you have to prove that this x1 and x2 look at that this is again called as a matrix b then x1 and this are my independent and this is my marginal density function that means x1 will follows the multivariate normal distribution with the mean mu1 and sigma11 and this value that is x2 minus b x1 this is my b will again follows the multivariate normal distribution with the mean is here and variance is my this how you can prove that that's a very simple now what is your, your target what is your target to prove that these are my independent how you can prove that independent if you prove that this is equal to 0 then they are independent fine so now i can start from here i can write this value as x1 comma x2 minus sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse outside covariance of x1 x1 that is a variance i can substitute this value x1 2 sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse what is that this is my variance so it is sigma 1 2 minus sigma 2 1 what is that it's a 1 1 what is the dimension of this 1 1 is p dimension so it's a identity matrix of the p so it comes to be sigma 1 2 minus sigma because it's a matrix identity matrix so it will be zero why because sigma 1 2 is always equal to sigma 2 1 so once the covariance is my zero therefore they are my independent nature now we can define the marginal density functions how you can define that i can take this is my y1 this is my y2 then i can take that transformation y is y1 and y2 such that this y i can return as y is equal to cx what is the coefficient of x1 1 coefficient of x2 0 coefficient of x1 is sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse and it is 1 but remember that this is not a one this is the identity matrix so what is the size of this is a coefficient of 1 1 means that's a p dimension this is the coefficient of i2 that is my of dimension q because x2 is of my q dimension so i call this transformation is my y is equal to cx fine this is my c y is equal to cx where c is my q now you can see what is the determinant of this ip into iq which is non zero therefore c is my non singular so once we know any of the matrix is non singular so therefore by the transformation y will follows the multivariate normal distribution with the mean cq and the covariance matrix c sigma c transpose fine now the only thing we need to prove that we have to find this value we have to find this value so we have the c we have the mu i can found the value of c into mu so that comes to be here you can see ip into mu 1 plus 0 that comes to be this number and similarly for the second case when you multiply this number sigma 1 1 inverse mu 1 plus mu 2 that is my this now so therefore you can clearly say this is the mean of x1 this is the mean of x2 
2 and you can see this is the mean of the x1 and this quantity is the mean of x2. Now I have to prove this variances are my this number. Always remember that this number is my covariance matrix which is always symmetric. So I can substitute the value of c, I can substitute the value of sigma, what is the sigma is? This is my sigma and c transpose is my this number. Now can you multiply them? I can say this is ip, this is minus sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse 0 into i q. Now can you multiply them? It will be sigma 1 1 plus 0 sigma 1 1. It is sigma 2 1 plus 0 minus sigma 1 1 sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse plus sigma 1 2 into i q or or you can because this identity matrix you can simply write this number. Similarly for the last row it is minus sigma 2 1 sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse plus sigma 2 into 2 fine. So once you can go this number now I can multiply this matrix what will happen the first number is ip into ip sigma 1 1 this number it will be minus sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 1. So this is my IP identity matrix when you multiply them it will be my sigma 2 1 plus sigma 2 1 that is my 0 because this is a always the symmetric matrix so this number is also 0. Now I can found this number that is last row last column. So it will be minus minus plus sigma 1 sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse sigma 1 1 sigma 2 1 this is my first number when you multiply this by here when you multiply this number by this minus sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse sigma 1 2 plus I can multiply this number by here minus sigma 2 1 sigma 2 1 sigma 1 1 inverse plus sigma 2 2 into i q is my 1. Now you can see this number is my i fine. So if it's an identity matrix so I can replace them as a 1. So what is the remaining is you can see this number will be cancelled. The only remaining thing is my sigma 2 2 minus this and that the same matrix I have denoted in the earlier statement. So what is the meaning of that? That means the first is a is a independent also. So therefore x1 and these two numbers y1 and y2 are my independent. So whose mean is my mu1 variance is this second mean is this and variance this and because we know it's the independent so therefore this sigma is uh, the, the, the diagonal matrix are my 0. So what is the conclusion is what, what we have obtained is if x follows the multivariate normal distribution then x1 will also follow the multivariate normal distribution with mean is mu1 and variance or covariance matrix is my sigma 1 1 and this also follows this this instead of the x, x2 this number is my here fine this is my basically y2 if I call this is my y2 then this also follows the multivariate normal distribution with the dimension here. Fine. So that an exercise for you if you have this number instead of this you can find the regression coefficient of x2 on x1 then you can similarly find the marginal density function of this quantity. So this is a simple way you can learn about this concept. I hope you can like my video as well. We will see the next lecture on the conditional distribution till then you can like comment on my videos. Best of luck students, happy learning.